Hey guys, going to be doing a DVD and Blu-ray update for all of the movies I've watched and picked up over the course of September and October. So the first one is the BFI release of Army of Shadows. Um, this is a great movie released in 1969 about the underground um, resistance fighters, uh, French resistance fighters in World War II during the period where Nazi occupied France. And yeah, it's just a really great dark movie. Um, the imagery in this one's very dark and chilling. And I've never actually seen um, a movie um, that's as dark as this one um, in regards to a World War Two movie. Um, it's just you just get a very much get a very good feel of how it must have been to live under Nazi occupation during World War Two um, in France, uh, specifically. I think this one's set in Paris. Um, but yeah, um, the director of this one is um, a Jewish French man, and you know he talks in a special feature on this about uh, what it's like sort of working with the actors who are all dressed up in Nazi uniforms. Um, but yeah, just a very very uh, dark movie in both imagery and uh, theme, and if you know if you curious about this movie I definitely definitely would recommend this one um, it does run for a little over two hours but in my opinion it's well worth it and I can't believe this one's a 12 I think it should have been more of a 15 uh, this one is uh, definitely by far probably one of my favorite uh, World War Two movies based around World War Two but yeah definitely worth checking out that one the next one is another World War II movie, and it is Roman Open City by Roberto Rossellini. Uh, this is part of Rossellini's um, war trilogy. Um, but yeah, this one is filmed and set in Rome, and it basically follows, again, uh, resistance fighters, this time Italian resistance fighters. Um, uh, you know, there's a vicar in this, or a, a priest who's... Uh, it, Phil follows uh, throughout the movie and he's uh, trying to protect the main um, the main uh, resistance fighters and you know the Nazis sort of overlook him and just see him as a, a, pr a priest bumbling around and not really know what he's doing but uh, by the end of the film they sort of become wise to these resistance fighters and um, you know they pretty much suss out what they're trying to do. Um, but again, this is a BFI release, and I don't think this is quite as good as Army of Shadows, but it's definitely one that I would still recommend watching. Um, it's still definitely a very dark movie, and it does feature a very, I'd say, very intense torture sequence where this guy literally gets um, burnt with... <laughs> you know, a flamethrower, and it does show that in quite graphic detail as well, it shows the flame um, seemingly burning the skin, and for a 1945 movie that is pretty ballsy in my opinion, um, so I would definitely, definitely recommend that uh, <laughs> you watch this film, but yeah, definitely shocked me with that torture sequence, it was quite a, something I didn't really expect for a film of 1945. The next one is Last Tango in Paris, starring Marlon Brando. <clears throat> it's basically about Brando's character moving to Paris and inhabiting with this young uh, Parisian girl. Um, and there, there was, it's basically about uh, the two's relationship throughout the film, how it sort of like uh, progresses. And it is just basically Marlon Brando being pretty abusive to this Parisian <laughs> girl throughout the movie. Um, yeah, a lot of weird scenes in this. Uh, there is a rape scene involving a stick of butter, which is very controversial because apparently the actress at the time didn't actually know that was going to happen. Nobody told her. And the director, um, a few years ago actually, when the uh, main actress in this film passed away, um, he actually uh, made a comment saying, you know, um, it's sad that we <laughs> didn't tell her that this rape scene was going to happen. And stuff like that, and basically, he said it talks about like regretting that he ever included that scene in the film. Not really a lot happens. It is just basically two characters talking in a room for the 
two hours and 45 minutes or however long it is but um, if you're interested in obviously the acting of and the works of Marlon Brando you know I definitely would give this one a watch uh, the next one is Big Red One a movie that was directed by a war veteran and it's basically his uh, story about his um, time in the 1st Infantry Battalion, uh, I believe, <laughs> but yeah, um, and that's basically the reasoning behind the title of this movie, The Big Red One, but it basically follows these soldiers um, through the war, and yeah, I don't really remember a lot about this one, but uh, Lee Marvin and Mark Hamill, uh, pretty really good cast actually. Um, I do remember it being quite a well shot movie. Yeah, there's not really much else I can say about this because I can't really remember too much about it, but um, from what I remember, it is a good film. And I do remember the ending with that Nazi and the uh, surrendering, and I remember it being quite an effective film. So there's that one. Uh, the next one is Signs, a movie by M. Night Shyamalan. Um, starring Mel Gibson and what's his name again? Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, this is the first M. Night Shyamalan movie I've actually checked out, um, but it's one that always interested me with the crop circles and everything. But basically, it follows a family and they have a large crop field and. Uh, one morning they notice a large ring um, in their, well, land, <laughs> in their crops. And uh, basically it turns out to be this worldwide thing that um, everyone with a crop field is noticing large circles in their uh, fields. And yeah, it's just a very interesting movie. The, the only thing that I think was let down in this is when you actually see the aliens at the end of the movie uh, I just think that was definitely left uncalled it should have been left alone and I think it should have been left more to the imagination rather than actually physically showing any aliens um, because in my opinion it's way more freaky what you don't see and what's left to the imagination rather than them showing you literally the creature that has made the crop circles in the field I'd rather them just leave it to conspiracy and stuff like that. One scene that was quite scary in this is where um, Joaquin Phoenix is reviewing this uh, footage uh, of this kid's birthday party and you do see a glimpse of the alien for a second and that one kind of startled me because I just didn't expect it um, but for them to actually show the aliens at the end and having an all-out encounter with them I just think that was pretty uncalled for. Uh, the next one is the Kino video release of Old Dark House. Obviously, this is one of the greatest, spookiest movies of all time. Um, and this one actually goes for quite a lot of money, so I was actually quite fortunate enough to pick this one up for £5 on eBay. Um, but these old Kino releases are definitely uh, great to have, and uh, the Old Dark House with Boris Karloff definitely... One of the more spookier movies that have ever been made, 1932, James Wyatt. Uh, next is a movie I didn't really like too much, Alice Sweet Alice. Uh, yeah, it was more... I was expecting more of a slasher movie than what it was. Um, and it just turned out to be just some... Kind of like a whodunit movie, and I wasn't really expecting that. It did go for a little too long also, I was expecting you know, a short movie about some killer kid, but it, it just didn't turn out that way at all. Um, it does have quite a good twist at the end, but I just think if they'd have condensed the movie a little bit, I think that would have been more of a big, more of a bigger payoff. Um, uh, one thing I did like about this movie is the uh, the death scenes and of course the mask which is quite obviously featured on the front of the poster and the front of the DVD but <clears throat> definitely 
a decent one, I wouldn't... Mm, I don't think I'll be rushing back to check this one out. Next one is Event Horizon, or it sh how it should be known. Um, how to get epilepsy. <laughs> because this one is just bright flashing lights right throughout the film, mainly towards the end really, but... Damn, this movie is bright. I mean, I I don't know how I managed to watch the end of this movie without putting on some sunglasses or something, because this is just... Just flashing lights galore. Everything towards the end is just flash, 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 flash. Um, but basically it is about this um, lost ship called... Um, lost spaceship called uh, the Event Horizon. And it's essentially... Sam Neill's creation and he needs to lead a group of people that are basically trying to recover it but um, this event horizon turns out to be much more than any of them other than Sam Neill could ever imagine and this movie is pretty damn good but it's again too bright and flashy for my opinion. Um, Again, Sam Neill does a really good job. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne does a pretty decent job as well. He's got some pretty funny scenes in this. Um, a lot of people have said this is basically Hellraiser in space, which I would agree for the most part. Um, there is quite a lot of depictions of a hellish... Um, it's just my dog choking in the background there. Um, <laughs> yeah, depictions of hell in this and... Yeah, it's quite a horrific movie. Um, we'll definitely check this one out. Next one is the Australian release of The Blob, and this also contains Son of the Blob. And if we're going on Blob movies, I'd definitely prefer the 50s movie rather to the 80s movie, even though I do appreciate the 80s movie for what it is. <clears throat> I would still very much prefer watching the original Steve McQueen 50s version. Uh, this one is more than just a sci-fi monster movie in my opinion you know it's got a load of great movies it's more of a coming of age movie um i love that scene with the race cars where steve mcqueen races um his buddies in the street and i don't know it's just more of a coming of age movie than the 80s one in my opinion and i just kind of enjoy it for what it is um <clears throat> but yeah as far as this one is concerned this is the Australian release. I haven't seen Son of Blob yet, but that one is known as a, quite a lot of different titles. Um, depending on where you live in the world, but... I saw this release on eBay for quite cheap, and I thought, why not pick it up? Love the cover art as well on this one. Next one is Brides of Dracula. Great Hammer Horror movie. Probably my favourite Hammer Horror movie. Uh, this one actually usually gets mistaken for the Christopher Lee franchise. It's got nothing to do with that at all. It doesn't even star Dracula or any brides of Dracula. Um, the movie should have been called something like The Brides of Some Blonde Impersonator of Dracula. But um, yeah, it stars a pretty... Uh, a pretty weird substitute for Dracula, this blonde-haired guy that I don't think he's been in anything else other than this movie. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a great movie. Lots of great atmospheric moments in this one. Probably the easiest Hammer horror film to sit through because a lot of them are quite boring and repetitive, but this one kind of did its own thing, and I appreciate that more than just copying some Universal movies and making them their own, they actually went in their own direction with this. Again, the only thing that's really a letdown is the title, kind of misleading, as it doesn't really feature Dracula, but there you go. The next one is a very disappointing movie called Curse of the Werewolf, and starring Oliver Reed, who doesn't show up until the latter half of the movie, probably because he was somewhere offset getting drunk or something, getting pissed up. Um, but basically this movie is about a beggar who um, <laughs> gets uh, knocks on the door of this rich aristocratic um, 
household, I guess, who are throwing a party. And they basically make him dance for food and don't end up giving him any anyway and throwing him in the dungeon, forgetting about him for about 10 or 20 years. And some woman who feeds him and <laughs> delivers him food gets raped by him and that's basically the um, story of how Oliver Reed came into the world. Um, yeah, he's a product of rape, everyone. No, anyway, um, he basically... It's basically a, a game, just a load of shit, because you don't see any werewolf action until the end of the movie. Um, the majority of the movie is just basically boring shit that doesn't really need to be in the movie, like why the fuck you'd put a, a weird beggar at the beginning of the movie <laughs> you know and that whole raping scene is just pretty stupid i don't know you'd have to be on some kind of drug to come up with that kind of story um but yeah um, i guess seeing oliver reed is good but in this movie i don't know uh, he, there is a lot of very funny scenes with him transitioning into a werewolf that isn't really convincing. It's more of a laughing stock. And there's some guy that looks like Christopher Biggins in this as well that gets uh, pretty much molested by Oliver Reed in the middle of the night, drunk. Anyway, that's my um, <laughs> breakdown of that film. Uh, definitely a massive letdown. Won't be watching that ever again. Next one is another 88 Films release, Unhinged. I was very pleasantly surprised with this one. Uh, I finally managed to find it for a decent price on eBay. Uh, a great story about these three girls who go on vacation, break down in the woods, get taken in by this weird, deranged family. Um, and yeah, there's a killer on the loose. So, And there's just such a massive twist at the end that I didn't see coming, and um, not going to give too much of it away, but uh, yeah, definitely very pleasantly surprised by this, uh, one of the video nasties. I wasn't expecting too much from this, but it just definitely delivered um, unexpectedly, and I definitely am glad I gave it a chance. Uh, but yeah, great movie. And the last two I picked up are two Blu-rays. Uh, the first one is Island of S Lost Souls, uh, starring Bela Lugosi in a very small role as one of these um, half-man, half-animal creatures created by Dr. Moreau. Uh, obviously based on the story Island of Dr. Moreau, but uh, they've just retitled it. Very controversial for the time that it's released, I believe in 1932, a lot of it got cut. Uh, there is a vivisection scene that was quite controversial that I believe to this day is still not fully restored um, because they did cut a lot from this. And yeah, I can see where they were coming from. It reminds me a lot of the movie Freaks from 1932 also, I believe, or 31. Um, but this is the Masters of Cinema release and... Uh, Charles Lawton plays a really great Dr. Moreau in this, just a very sadistic performance by Charles Lawton. Um, but it does come with a booklet and it is a two disc edition. Uh, Bela Lugosi delivers one of the one of my all time favourite lines in movie history. Uh, we you made us in the house of pain, I believe he says in that. Um, yeah, again, this PG, this is just so horrifying, especially the last part of the movie. I would just definitely up the rating to a 12, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, just such a great release. I haven't seen any of the special features on this, but one of the only things that annoyed me is the Blu-ray has... I don't know, it just doesn't fill the entire screen. I would have preferred a full screen release of this movie. Uh, considering, you know, it's a Masters of Cinema release, but then again, it is quite an old movie. Maybe not a lot of it was able to get fully remastered and restored, but uh, yeah, I still really enjoyed this. Definitely a very creepy 
atmospheric movie. If you've seen Island of Dr. Moreau, either the 77 version or the 80s version, it's the same story, but um, obviously uh, the original. I think it's the first screen adaptation of it anyway. And finally is one I picked up from our video, know nothing about it, uh, White of the Eye. I have also ordered a few of our video releases uh, that I've been meaning to check out due to the hour video cell being on. Um, but yeah, other than that, I can't really say anything about it. It looks a pretty good movie. Uh, the director is Scottish, haven't seen any of his other uh, movies. Uh, it looks like a decent sort of slasher movie. But yeah, overall, that has been my October 2020 update, so please like, comment, subscribe, and goodbye.